I, once again, I have no idea when this is going to get posted. Um, Thursday night is when I'm recording this right now. It's 6 o'clock. Well, <clears throat> as far as week number 9 was concerned... I get a very fortunate victory over Alex Matika after George Pickens had a temper tantrum. Uh, Deontay Johnson went off for 18 points, thought I was in the dust. His team did not show up. Um, Cousins Bull, Andre takes the cake here. Who is the? Oh, David Cryer's 172 explosion. Again, I feel like we go through this script every year. One week. We buy into the David Cryer team, and then they don't show up the next week, which always buys into my theory of whenever a team just goes absolutely bonkers one week, they don't show up. However, this team is starting to find its identity, and it could be very, very dangerous if it gets into the playoffs for the first time in its entire career. Johnny J. Fresh gets the job done against Paul. Uh, Paul, two weeks ago, had a lot of hope. I think it's gone now. Next. Uh, Robert Coffey barely getting the job done. Well, I don't even want to say it like that, but very fortunate that when you get harsh on the schedule twice, not just once, one more time. And kind of an upset here, but I think it had to do with the Dolphins just getting nothing. B Magic wins 87-78, trying to keep his playoff hopes alive. Um, as of right now, I want to just kind of go through the standings because we are almost in that push. There are a total of three teams with the same record. Four, excuse me. Both cousins atop of their division. Allen obviously leading the pack. Johnny way ahead of the pack in points. Probably at this point you got to crown him the number one team um, because they are healthy. They don't have a lot of injuries. I think Nico Collins just popped up in the report. Kyler Murray coming back. Maybe Justin Fields coming back. I think, if anything, the one thing that this team is probably going to have to look at is shopping either Nico Collins, DJ Moore, or Marquise Brown because I think while depth is important, you want to make that final roster push when you go into the playoffs. Last thing you want is too many depth pieces, and then you got to say to yourself, fuck, who do I start? Um. Because not for nothing, there are a lot of intriguing pieces on this team that could be sold. Um, in fact, the receivers, I think, are all impossible to figure out when they're going to go off. So when you start, I think the way the running back floor with this team, as long as they get two of the four receivers to hit it in a, in a low scoring year, I think that's all this team kind of really needs. But the thing that is really intriguing is that the Andre team, the Nicholas team, the David Sutton team that have six or five wins, they are fortunate with wins because I can also see these teams really starting to crumble down a bit. It's possible with the way the roster construction is on a lot of these teams. On the flip side, the outside looking in, the teams that uh, David Cryer's team is very, very scary. Um, this could be that one second half team that makes a push. I still think the Alex Matiga team and the Rob Coffey team, if Rob Coffey's team is able to get Justin Jefferson back, I think this is a formidable team. The only concern with the Coffey team is what's going on with Devontae Adams, but we'll have to see what week number 10 has in store. Um... This is probably projected to be one of the lowest scoring games on the slate. Uh, two people who respect each other very much, myself and Vintage Arsh Gadini. Um, okay, I'm on the wrong website. Sorry about that. Okay, well... It's a projected at 103 to 84. Obviously, Harsh does not have a running back in at this time. Um, okay. Sorry, I got a pain in the neck right now. Legit pain in the neck. Kyler Murray on the return versus Justin Herbert. Um, I think it's official. 
Justin Herbert should be so much better than what he is. I think that this guy, uh, granted it was the Jets' defense. He's had two duds against two, like when he's against good defenses, he doesn't look that good for fantasy purposes, not in real life. Detroit's kind of middle of the pack. My issue with the Chargers' offense against competent teams is they have nobody outside of Keenan Allen that can catch passes in Austin Eckler. Um, Quentin Johnson sucks. Jalen Guyton didn't look good at all. Um, and on top of that, Josh Palmer's hurt. If Palmer was here, like it's it's going to be all Keenan Allen again. I'm surprised they don't use Gerald Everett a little bit more. Gerald Everett had a lot of good games last year, and I think they need to realize, like, put him in the slot, put him outside. I don't know what they got to do, especially with their run game being very inefficient this year. Kyler Murray is going to be interesting. Now, I like quarterbacks that you don't have film on on their first dick game back. Murray is a mobile quarterback. He might have to run around a lot, but I don't know with the knee if that is going to be the case. Well, due to all of this, I'm still going to go Herbert just because Murray could either get me 15 points or he can get 25. But Herbert's got more upside, so I'll give him that. George Pickens, Jahan Dotson taking on Zay Flowers and Chris Olave. Well, everybody knows what happened with George Pickens. He's upset. He was pissed off. Um, Pickens, I think, the role, it's a boring offense. But the role that they have him in this offense when Deontay Johnson is there is literally a two to three route guy which is why the people that were fading George Pickens this year just looked at that and said, oh, can't separate. But honestly, that doesn't even mean shit because the guy has a great, uh, as Johnny likes to say, catch radius. I think if this guy does not get involved, I think Pittsburgh is going to have a shit ton of fireworks to deal with. It's going to become a distraction. I, I'm going to predict the George Pickens touchdown because I, I would be really, really nervous for that organization, if he doesn't get the ball. And for my fantasy team, obviously. Jahan Dotson has had two really good back-to-back -back weeks. Curtis Samuel does come back. So a lot of people are starting to pump the brakes on Jahan Dotson and say, hey, dude, um, this guy's only being good because Curtis Samuel. Well, okay, fine. But this guy, every time he gets the ball, dude, something good happens. Zay Flowers, again, I just, this guy doesn't have a lot of touchdown upside. He's a slot guy. They're treating him like a slot guy. Chris Olave, I'm advanced metric darling, Chris Olave. I think this guy always is going to pop up in the advanced metric model, and he's always going to be on the buy low model. Uh, shout out to Rob Coffey. He called him the new DJ Moore, a guy we thought was going to be pushed into that elite tier of receivers, but in reality is just kind of stuck in wide receiver two purgatory. I think. That is a great comparison for Chris Olave. Aaron Jones and Jalen Warren playing each other in the same game. Um, I think Matt LaFleur realized that the Packers suck and their best player on the field is Aaron Jones. And he was unleashed. Yes, he was. So he didn't lie there. They're limiting him due to him being a veteran and this, that, the other. Jalen Warren, a guy I did not play last week, which almost cost me. Here's the thing with Jalen Warren. If the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think we kind of have a good model now. Jalen Warren, I think, is the is not a good play if the game is in a neutral script. I, I know this is going to sound weird. If the Steelers are trailing, he's going to get dump offs. If the Steelers are blowing out a team or they're up big, he's going to get mixed in with Najee Harris. Now, obviously, I think if you look between both of them, who's the better back? It's Jalen Warren. But I'm also thinking that Jalen Warren is also only good because he's getting those limited touches to be uh, honest with you. Um, I honestly like Jones and Warren in both of these matchups. I think Warren has a chance to get hit double digits. I think Jones's floor is like 8 to 10. I'm going to say Jones 14. I'll say Warren 10. I can't go confidently without a touchdown over than that. Uh, Cam Akers, RIP to his career. Zach Moss against New England. He can fall into the end zone, so I do like that matchup. Um I am probably going to play counter cock block and go Gerald Everett rather than Kate Otten, although I think Kate Otten 
Might be better rest of the season. Trey McBride with Kyler Murray. I think both him and Rondell Moore will actually have very, very good games. You heard it here first. Those are the two guys that I am going to confidently um, have faith in. Are we good? Okay, let's move on. Stephon Diggs and Keenan Allen versus Garrett Wilson and Tank Dell. This is intriguing. Garrett Wilson, I think, is probably going to have the best matchup he's had all year. And with Zach Wilson, he's had a decent floor. He hasn't had the upside games that like we would have loved hoped. Um, but we'll see. Tank Dell. Now this guy, harsh, you were on him, then you were off him, which I thought was a smoke screen, and then you were on him again. Well, in a game where I think a lot of explosive fireworks in a shootout, Tank Dell has clearly established himself on 11 targets as one of the premier slot receivers, I think. The more and more they get him involved, the better. But I'm going Diggs and Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen is the vocal point of this fucking offense, and it's it's a shame because I do think if Mike Williams was still here, I think that Keenan Allen could get open a lot more. I think the Mike Williams injury, which is what I was afraid of, I didn't want to say it because I was confident, Mike Williams' injury has definitely limited him to a floor play rather than an upside play. Just because Mike Williams clears out so much space because of that big playability that he has. Keenan Allen, I still think, will have a floor of 10 to 11. But it's going to be very hard to see him get a 20-point game. Although I do like this matchup, and uh, I do think that the Chargers do win. A very, very weird, weird thing that I'm starting to come up with. I don't know. I just I just think that the Chargers could win this matchup against the Detroit Lions. Stephon Diggs, the only thing that concerns me is um, Pat Sertan. But corners don't really shadow that much anymore. He'll be on him a lot, though. So take it for what it's worth. He could be limited in this one. All right. Going down. Uh, Tampa Bay against Tennessee. Against Will Levis, there's a lot of zone blitz packages. They could force some turnovers. It's possible. Uh, I'll take the Jets D against Aiden O'Connell, though. I really like that. Um, all right. Time to pick a uh, victor. I'm going to go myself on this one. Um. Guys that will stand out, I think Kyler Murray's return is going to be nice. I think Trey McBride will have another very big game at the tight end spot. And... That's all, folks. It's funny because... My hot takes in the beginning of the season were on both of these teams, and the exact opposite happened. I said the Dark Horse team, Sleeper team, was going to be Patrick, and I said the team that is probably going to bust and surprise a lot of people is Johnny for two years in a row. The exact opposite had happened. The Johnny team's looking like the best team in the league. Patrick team just didn't work out. Um, lesson learned here. Johnny... I know you're listening to this because you're obviously on this uh, podcast because it's your matchup. This is the definition of why you should go receivers early. Case in point, look at his team. Eckler was hurt. He goes Jalen Hurts. Now, I, I get it. That's on him. He, he took a quarter or a quarterback really early. And then his starting receivers, one is in an offense that refuses to use their best players. And the other starting receiver is the beta behind the alpha. So, granted, you can say, well, I would have never made those picks anyway, Nikki, but there were no other good receivers in that round. He has fallen victim to that case. All right. Um, okay, here we go. Josh Allen versus, dude, hold the holy crap. Okay, you've got balls. Deshaun Watson. Um, that experiment I, I was done with. Uh, the minute, I just, it was a bad sign. The minute he goes down and starts in that Indianapolis game and got me negative one, I said, cut bait. Yeah, he 
went over 20. He had 22 fantasy points against the Arizona Cardinals, but he still looked like poop. The only time he ever looks confident throwing the ball is to Amari Cooper. Uh, every other pass is just god awful. And the fact that he still has a shoulder injury, or if it's, we don't know if it's a real injury. It could be a phantom injury. I don't know. Bottom line is it's Josh Allen by a billion in this one. Adam Thielen tonight, Marquise Brown against the Atlanta Falcons, or Drake London against Arizona and T. Higgins. Well, here's my theory. Before I give Johnny his take, T. Higgins with a hamstring not expected to play, which means, Johnny, you're taking the victory here in the wide receiver department. But I want to touch on Drake London a little bit. Um I know it sounds gross saying this because buying any Atlanta Falcon player is kind of like nerve-shaking. Taylor Heineke, in my opinion, is not better than Desmond Ritter, which says a lot. Um, But when Heineke throws the ball deep downfield, I think that could suit Drake London's skill set really well. I think Drake London is going to be very inefficient. But I can see his stat line, especially in this game, being like 5 for 115 in a touchdown on like 10 targets. Um, I think Heineke's game, because he's the YOLO ball guy, Ritter was a little bit more conservative. He didn't take a lot of deep down uh, shots down the field. Drake London might be a buy. Um, I don't know what the hell you could get for him, but if if you could shoot out an offer, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually does very well in that matchup. Adam Thielen, um, this should be a good matchup. Uh, the fact that the Bears play a lot of zone coverage, he's a veteran. He'll find those empty open slots. Uh, I do think I'm going to say this right now, Johnny. He should be sold after this game. Um, I The first half pace was absolutely insane. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. I think what you're realizing right now is that he's a low floor wide receiver too. Um, Bryce Young just looks like shit to point it the return of marquise brown um well with kyler murray marquise brown with kyler murray was surprisingly a wide receiver one at times last year um i think he's going to again johnny i think all your receivers are in the same range they're boomer bust wide receiver twos maybe gabe davis and dj Moore as of right now are boomer bust wide receiver threes but i think in the range of outcomes i think that's what it's going to be murray Out of all the guys that he has on this offense, he has the most rapport with Marquise Brown and Rondell Moore. Now, I want to pump the brakes on Marquise Brown. I think he'll be okay as far as earning a target share is concerned, but I might temper expectations in this matchup. Now, two years ago, I thought A.J. Terrell was going to be the best lockdown corner in the league. He had an off year last year. They then bring in Jeff Okuda. They are actually very, very good on the perimeter, lockdown, man-to-man coverage. They play a lot of man-to-man coverage. Um, And I'll tell you how effective they've been. Carolina, okay, they don't have a real wide receiver. Green Bay, okay, they don't have a real wide receiver. Detroit, they lose that game 6-20. to But, hmm, Nick, what can you tell me about that one? Oh, yeah, they don't have anybody because Amon Ruff St. Brown plays in the slot. Okay, Jacksonville game. Now, this is the only one where it might seem legit, all right? Calvin Ridley goes in there and he does dog shit. And Christian Kirk does well. There's a pattern I'm getting to here. Hold the fucking phone. Houston, uh, all those receivers got shut down. Tank Dell, however, pattern coming here, Johnny. Tank Dell got concussed and had eight points in the first uh, first half. Washington, they, I believe, locked down all those receivers because I think Logan Thomas, if I'm not mistaken, somebody had a touchdown. Brian Robinson on a screen. McLaurin was limited. Tampa Bay. They they beat Tampa. I think Mike Evans was limited. The only game where those outside corners got absolutely cooked was the Tennessee game where Hopkins, but all Hopkins did was catch fucking Moonraker lob bombs all freaking game. Here's, Here's what we can say. They haven't played legit alpha wide receivers all year on the outside. So I'm going to throw that out there. It's a small sample size. When they did play a quote-unquote alpha, Hopkins killed them. But my only concern with that is it's Will Levis' first start. You don't have any film on him. And this guy literally just said, 
fuck it. I'm just going to chuck it up. Hope Hopkins comes down with it. And the first touchdown was definitely offensive pass interference on, I think it was AJ Terrell. I'm a little bit nervous with Marquise Brown just because the way to attack, which I said, if you follow my pattern, is the slot. If David Sutton is in the room, I'm going to say it on his matchup. I actually, believe it or not, as much as I love Michael Wilson, I think Rondell Moore and Trey McBride have a huge game in this one. I don't think it's Marquise Brown. I think he'll get 8 to 10 points. Okay, I'm done with that. Christian McCaffrey, Rashad White, Isaiah Pacheco. Oh, he's not even fucking playing. Dude, this kid. Oh, whoa, dude. All right, uh, Johnny, we're, we're done with this. Uh, Mark Andrews and Logan Thomas. Uh, Andrews. Dal double tight end again. Dalton Kincaid and Gabe Davis. The green. Uh, why did I say Green Bay? Buffalo stack. KJ Osborne and Brandon Ayuk. Well, if Debo Samuel is playing, I don't want anything to do with Brandon Ayuk or Debo Samuel. KJ Osborne. Uh, you know what? I'm going to give a hot take. I'm surprised you kept this, dude. With Josh Dobbs, something can tell me in a matchup where you can attack them in the slot. Quarterbacks that don't have a lot of experience with their guys, like Josh Dobbs, are going to attack the middle of the field where Osborne usually plays. But Brandon Powell, I think, is more of the permanent slot guy now. Just a little tidbit. I wouldn't be surprised if he oh, at least beat his projection at six. So, in other words, eight. Baltimore against Cleveland at home. I love this defense against fucking Deshaun Watson. The only saving grace he, you might have is that Dallas defense. And I'm going to tell you why. Dallas put up 40 against the Giants the last time, and that was with Daniel Jones. They put up 19 against the Jets. They put up 32 against the Patriots. You're going to need that type of performance, especially when you're running back two this week might be Keontae Ingram or Samaj P. Ryan or Latavius. Oh, my God. Oh, no, James Conner comes back. Johnny, I'm sorry. Uh, I think Patrick hasn't updated his lineup. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Johnny. So, okay, I'll give you more in-depth analysis. I got to go back to the running backs now. I haven't done this yet. McCaffrey against Jacksonville will be okay. Rashad White against the Tennessee Titans, okay? Now I actually have to fucking go in-depth with this motherfucker. Um, okay. He's, he's had a good floor, and he had 25 fantasy points. Cool. I said that 18 points. He was not going to top that. He did. He stopped it. So congratulations to Rashad White. Titans defense in the beginning of the year looks stout. They're starting to look a little bit meh. Somebody had said, though, that they're really good against running backs, especially ones that catch the ball. They've allowed the fewest receptions. At this point, dude, I can't hate on this guy anymore, though. Chase Edmond sucks. Sean Tucker's a healthy scratch every game. And Keyshawn Vaughn, I don't even know how this guy still has a job. Bottom line is this. I don't know. He's going to get 10 to 12 of the floor because nobody's taking his job. Which, yeah. look, 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 look. I'm just going to flat out say it because I think even some people who are Rashad White stands know it. The guy is not great between the tackles. And I think everybody knows next year he's a big fade at draft cost. But enjoy it right now because you're probably going to get the only year of a successful Rashad White. Um, on his side, Austin Eckler and uh, James Conner could have potential to overtake your running backs. Uh, Eckler, if you haven't listened to what I had to say, every year his yards per carry have gone down. He has not looked very good as a rusher. His catches, though, are saving him. And a matchup, that should be a lot of points in it. High-scoring affair. I can confidently tell you that I think Austin Eckler might have a good game. I think he'll carry the ball 15 times for 50 yards, which is not exciting. But I can see six catches for 48 and a touchdown. So do the math on that. But I think McCaffrey off of the bye will be just enough for McCaffrey and White to beat James Conner and Austin Eckler. James Conner, um, somebody had said I think Atlanta is decent enough against running backs, but I'm... I don't know what to think of the Atlanta Falcons in general. I mean, it's it's hard. Um, okay. If Patrick is to pull an upset, it's the defense. Uh, that Dallas defense really can actually do a lot of damage. 
The only way I don't think the Dallas defense does damage is do the Giants just say, dude, don't even throw the ball and run it with Barkley, which would really suck for Patrick. That would look good for um, Johnny, though. But if they want to see what this kid can do as far as throwing the ball is concerned, I think it's going to cause a lot of turnovers. Johnny, I think you have this one in the bag. Um, I do think there are going to be a lot of surprising performances on his side, but I don't think this should be a problem for you. Mm, okay. This next matchup we have has a lot of playoff implications. The Magic has won two straight. Whether they're legit or not, it remains to be seen. And a team that is hard to figure out, Mr. David Cryer. So, on one side, Raheem Mostair will not be playing in this game. That's the only significant buy. So, it's really important that the Magic capitalizes. Is it projected at 95 to 99? Derek Carr at Minnesota or Dak Prescott? Right now, Dak is looking after the bye week. Dak has put up back to back 30 point performances. Granted, they were both against really bad pass defenses. The Rams, I remember in the beginning of the year, people were saying they were good, but they have fallen off. And then the Philadelphia, and now he gets the New York Giants. Well, it appears to me that this bodes for a good matchup for Mr. Dak. Uh, flip side, Derek Carr has been flurry. Um I would probably roll somebody else, but if you're saying to yourself, you know what, the other guys are kind of boom or bust, Carr at least is going to get me my floor. I understand the thought process. DK Metcalf, this dude needs to fucking wake up. I don't even think it's his fault. Geno Smith's looked really bad. Um, every Seattle receiver has been a disappointment, okay? There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Debo Samuel is back too. I think San Francisco needs to come in and like just, I know Jacksonville's no slouch, but they really need to start utilizing their best players. Michael Pittman and Amari Cooper. um, I feel like we have this discussion with Amari Cooper every single year. His home games are a lot better than his road games. A lot better. The good news though is he's had one. Wow. He hasn't had a lot of road games. One, two, so two of the three road games he's hit double-digit performances. I, I don't see it here at uh, Baltimore. Michael Pittman Jr., well, we'll have to monitor the health of Josh Downs, but this guy's been very consistent, like really, really consistent. Um, He could have had a bigger game. He got hurt. New England, they're cooked. They're tanking at this point. Uh, Hopefully he scores in Germany. But I'm actually going to go Metcalf and Debo Samuel. Metcalf. Metcalf, I think, uh, be magic if you're listening. Hope to God that he goes off because he fits the profile of a guy that is going to give the Washington secondary fits. If he goes off, you need to sell him immediately. Like I don't want anything to do with any Seattle receiver. I think the running backs are more intriguing at this point. This Seattle receiver situation, and especially with Jackson Smith and Jigba getting more acclimated into the offense, I don't want anything to do with these guys at all, but I'll take them in this matchup. Josh Jacobs against the Jets, Derrick Henry against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The two picks that I absolutely hated by David Cryer have lived up to expectations. Derrick Henry, although this guy has no burst left, he's still getting double-digit fantasy points. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, though, are still decent enough on the ground. Josh Jacobs, with Aiden O'Connell, Josh Jacobs is absolutely unstoppable. He is going to get a lot of dump-offs, even though he didn't last. uh, The Giants game, he had two rushing touchdowns. Jets game, yeah. I think this guy's going to get at least eight targets because he's not running against that Jets defense. Flip side, Saquon Barkley. Well, what can we say about Mr. Barkley? Here's what we can say. With Tommy DeVito, they're going to feed the shit out of this guy. And Tony Pollard, a.k.a. biggest bust in fantasy football right now. He's another guy. If, if if he doesn't get it done against the Giants, dude, sayonara. Like, this guy's just awful. Um, I, I don't know what to say, man. He lost all his bursts. He's only 26. He might not be healthy. It's the only thing I could tell you. Uh, Jake Ferguson. 
or TJ Hawkinson. Ferguson had a huge game last week, but I like Hawkinson with Josh Dobbs. Kareem Hunt, George Kittle, Gus Edwards, Antonio Gibson. I haven't said that name this year. Um, Okay. Gus Edwards is pissing me off with these touchdown performances. He's going to score again. Antonio Gibson, I'm not big on. Kareem Hunt also gets it done with just touchdowns. He scored in four straight. Make it five straight, I get No, not against the Ravens. George Kittle. Well, the problem with the Niners, guys, is that two of the pass catchers can barely function, and it's hard for me to get excited about that. San Francisco D or Vegas D. Whoa. Um, I like my Jets to bounce back, but I can see why it's an intriguing option. Give me San Francisco D. Um, the only intriguing option that I see here, if I have to pick a victory or victor, I'm going to sl- slide with B Magic only because I don't, <sighs> I think Dak will be okay and I think the running backs will be all right, but I don't know about everything else. B Magic, I think, has a better matchup case. The only thing that I don't like is Kareem Hunt. So, I'll go with Magic. We got ourselves a rematch of a Super Bowl once upon a time ago. If you know what I mean. Okay. We're good? Paul versus Allen. Before I begin, Paul, if you're still listening to this, Allen Williams. I understand that there was an impossible way for you to get CJ Stroud because B Magic bid eighty dollars, but you only won a dollar. That's just bad management. Um, I don't know where you think you're gonna find a quarterback. Me and you have had quarterback troubles the whole season. But this is just and you need to get your boy Sam Howell at least. Speaking of, Sam Howell and Jordan Love. Um, I don't like either of these guys. I think that they both no, actually that's I don't know. Let me let me break it down like this. <clears throat> Jordan Love only is projected for 14 points, so for me to say he finishes lower than that says a lot, but I could see it happening. Sam Howell, I think he'll finish lower than 18, reason being he throws a lot. That's good. But Seattle plays a lot of zone where he ranks at the bottom of the league in against his own coverage. So that Sam Howell, Howell, Terry McLaurin combo, oof, I, I don't know if that's going to pop off. Will the Jordan Love and Jaden Reed combo? Probably not either. Calvin Ridley, Joe Mixon. Oh, by the way, I think, I think if, uh, you know what? Hold on. I'm going to say, based on his lineup construction, I'll say that. Chase goes in for Jackson Smith and Jigba. So I'll still take Chase and Reed over McLaurin and relieve. I, I just don't like those guys. Uh, Joe Mixon, Dante Foreman will have a big game tonight. Joe Mixon will get uh, a decent sized workload. He, look, he looks horrible as a running back, but I feel like when he's catching the ball, like, he might be a buy. I hate to admit it, but as bad as running back has been, he might be a buy. Alvin Kamara and Travis Etienne, though, are probably a lot better than those two guys. Dalton Schultz or Hunter Henry? Dalton Schultz is sneakily really good this year with C.J. Stroud. I don't even know why Leonard Fournette is in, but if Kenneth Walker, Walker, if Kenneth Walker does suit up, It'll be him. So I'm going to imagine Kenneth Walker and Jameer Gibbs versus Cortland Sutton and James Cook. I'll take the Walker side and the Jameer Gibbs side. And Allen has not picked up a defense. My guess is either Keandre Miller or Marvin Mims gets... Actually, not Marvin Mims. Marvin Mims won't get dropped because they play on Monday and he'll have a to look at the stats to see if whether he wants to keep them or not. 
Luke Musgrave is probably going to be the guy to get dropped. Um, because he has Dalton Schultz, and realistically, who's going to pick up Luke Musgrave? Flip side, New Orleans against Minnesota. Uh, I'm a Josh Dobbs supporter, so hopefully that's not going to sway my way into thinking, but it kind of is. Um, Paul, aside from your running backs, I don't like any of your matchups at all. Um, even though you're projected, that's because he doesn't have Jamar Chase in. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll I'll still go Allen on this one. Oh man. Okay. These two teams, man. If there's one game where somebody's going to need that victory, they're going to need that dub. It's going to be the matchup between Alex and Rob Coffee. I think. Looking at the standings in both, Alex is decent. In point total, maybe not against Cryer, but with Nicholas being 3-0 in the division, that's, yeah, dude, holy crap, it's a lot. Um, obviously, Nicholas's defense, 896 points against. Looks like people are afraid to uh, put up points against the GOAT. No, I'm just kidding. Kidding. Um, okay. Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson, let's get into it. Coffee? If Jamar Chase doesn't suit up, obviously I'm going Lamar Jackson, but I think he'll be okay. Josh Downs, Christian Kirk, Deontay Johnson, Amonra St. Brown. La, I will take Deontay and Amonra St. Brown. I have to be honest, the Saquon Barkley move for Amonra St. Brown has really made this close to a complete team. It's very flory, but when you have, if Lamar does Lamar things with these two, Flory receivers and your floor esque running backs, I think it looks pretty solid. Um, that's considering when everybody's healthy, though, and that's been a big issue for the Alex team. Chuba Hubbard, yeah, David Montgomery, Jonathan Taylor, and Jerome Ford. All right. David Montgomery is back, which means you're going to get a minimum of 17 points because Dan Campbell loves this guy. Chuba Hubbard. Um, I thought really hard about ranking him in my handcuffs list, but I can never get excited about this guy. I loved him coming out of – I remember he was a good workhorse back in college, but this offense sucks. I think he's way better than Miles Sanders. But for 10 points against the Bears, D, should be an easy, easy game. But, hey, I've seen stranger things happen. Jonathan Taylor and – Jerome Ford. Taylor has not looked good running the ball. Um, Jerome Ford has, though. But this is a bad matchup for Jerome Ford. Jonathan Taylor should, should be okay in his matchup. The only guy I really feel confident is David Montgomery. So I'll slide with coffee on this one. Taysom Hill. Okay. Taysom Hill we have to treat like Gabe Davis. If you own Taysom Hill, you can never bench this guy. He is literally going to get you two points, or he's going to get you double digits. There's no in-between. Two points or double digits. Kylan Granson looks like uh, you didn't know who to play. I'll go Taysom Hill because he's the only tight end that could actually throw for a touchdown pass. I don't know what logic I'm giving you with that, but... Devontae Adams and Brees Hall. Brees Hall... Uh, people are saying that he's overrated. Okay, relax. It's because he's playing with Zach Wilson. Devontae. Solid. Very, very solid receiver in the National Football League. Devin Singletary and Rash uh, Rashid Shahid. Um, he was quiet last week, which means he's going to blow up this week. Devin Singletary sucks. I don't want that shit. Pittsburgh D, Buffalo D. I mean... Tit for tat. Who do I got? I'm going to say Pittsburgh. I like that matchup. Um, I've, I've made my case. If the Alex team is to do anything, I think Lamar's got to get over 20. Deontay and Amon St. Brown have to flirt with 20. And the running backs have to get double-digit points. 
If the top half of that roster can do that, I think he's got a chance. The only thing that concerns me with the Rob Coffey team, Josh Downs just might be a really good wide receiver. Um, he's not practicing, though. And if that's the case, I have no idea what the fuck Coffee does because there's a lot. Jefferson said he's limited. I don't know. Coffee, you're going to hate. But you hate to see it. But you're probably going to have to go Quinn Johnston. Oh, my God, dude. Um, Christian Kirk. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting way off track here. Now that I'm thinking about it, the top half of the roster looks a lot better on the Alex side. Bottom half looks a lot better on the coffee side. Okay. This is going to call for a touchdown check. We're going to do the coffee side. Joe Burrow. I'm going to say two touchdowns. Josh Downs, if he plays touchdown, if he doesn't, obviously zero. Christian Kirk, no touchdown. Chuba Hubbard, you know what, coffee? Yes. Yes. Chuba Hubbard, touchdown. Diva Montgomery, two touchdowns. So where are we at with that? Two and two is four. So five touchdowns. Taysom Hill, he's running hot, so he's going to have to cool off. So I'm going to say no touchdown for Taysom Hill. Devontae Adams, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Brees Hall will get one touchdown, and Pittsburgh D will get another touchdown. So let's do that count. That's seven. Maddox is tied. Lamar Jackson at home, three touchdowns. Deontay Johnson, no touchdown. I'm going to St. Brown, one touchdown. So we're at four. Jonathan Taylor, one touchdown. That's five. Jerome Ford, no. Kyler Granson, no. Devin Singletary, no. Rashid Shaheed, yes, six touchdowns. So with that being said, if I'm just going off of touchdowns alone, Rob Coffey, you win by one extra touchdown, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here for the matchup of the... Uh, is this really the matchup of the week? Record-wise, it is. 5-14 and 14, taking on a 6-3 and 3 team. You can't argue with that. Scoring is at an all-time low. It's just... Dude, it, whenever I see somebody projected at 104 or 99, I'm like, oh, they got to have their whole team on a bye. And then you look at it, it's like one or two players on it. It sucks. We love points in the fantasy community. But I think that goes back to what I think a lot of people are starting to realize is that a lot of these running backs get hurt. A lot of the running backs are getting into timeshares. And there's only a select few teams that have the elite wide receivers to kind of just say, oh, shit, that team's going to go by the fucking earth. Bzzz. All right. All right, I'm going to go to our play-by-play -play guy and commentate this game. All right, welcome back to the matchup. We got Honey Bijan with him and Ames taking on the King of the Hill. And we're not talking Hank. Trevor Lawrence, that's Jaguar fresh off a of bye, looking to prove all the doubt is wrong that he believes in the late company. Taking on Chino Poopy Smith. I got no faith in Chino, give me Trevor. DeAndre Hopkins going against the Buccaneers. Will these pirates be enough to stop this future Hall of Famer? I must say no. He's going to go off. Darnell Mooney. Are you serious? This bear's not even a bear cub. He can't scare me. Going back to the Holly Bichon with M&Ms, we talk about pirates. And this captain's coming on with his mighty might. He got Chris Goldwyn and Mark Evans. If the matchup bodes well, you got to go with Mike Evans. I think him and Hopkins are going to find a time machine. They're going to party like it's 2015, and they're going to go off. As far as Chris Godwin's concerned, he might not go off, but he'll do just enough to make you feel comfortable in your lineup. I'm going to have to go with Honey Bijan with m and Ames. David Sutton, if you were listening to... Johnny's take. There's a hidden jam on your roster. Here I throw in more than Darnell Mooney. Alexander Madison and Javante Williams both projected at 12 points. There's Bajon Robinson and Ramondre Stevenson. When I look at every single one of these running backs, I get sick to my stomach and I want to puke. 
all over the computer screen. If I had to say there's one man I'm confident in, it's got to be Javante. I hate Madison. Hate Bijan as much as Arthur Smith. And that Ramondre Stevenson don't belong on a fantasy roster. Speaking of, Kyle Pitts, you're both going off of uh, Arthur Smith's most hated players. I love it. Versus Evan Ingram. I've got to go Ingram on this one just because Kyle Pitts is the Pitts. You see what I did there coming from the laying down under. Let's move on to flex, shall we? Hardest receiver in the league. It's not AJ Brown. It's not Tyree Hill. It's not Antonio Brown. It's not Jerry Rice. It's somebody even more nice. It's Lamb going ham. And he gets the Giants. Here's my theory, though, with CD Lamb. I want you to be very quiet, all right? Because I don't want anybody to hear this because it might set off somebody very, very, very angry. This is going to be the one week. Two weeks ago, I said he was going to go off. Last week, I said he would be just fine against Philly. But he's going to cool off this week, mate. I'm going to say 70 yards and a touchdown. Why? Because Dallas will be up 40 to nothing at the half. Well, then you got a guy named Norgie Harris. Who? <laughs> Listen. 14 points, 8 points, 14 points. I don't care how sluggish this motherfucker looks. He's getting it done. And the Green Bay Packers, they don't scare so. Then I give you Khalil Shakir and Sam Laporta. I love Laporta. And Khalil Shakir, nice flex spot there, David. Especially if Chris Harris is going to be on the perimeter against Diggs. I think Shakir could be looking at eight catches for 80 yards. That's my bold take. Prop bet that shit. Whatever that receiving line is, hammer the fuck out of it. And last but not least, if there's one man who wanted to double down on Thursday night, I guess it's David with the Bears D taking on the Coats D. I'm actually going to go with the Coats D because who the fuck starts the Bears D? Oh, I love it. All right, all right, mate. Time for us to saddle up, pick a winner. And when I look at who I'm going for, I'm going to say the MVP of this game. High scoring performer is going to go to none other than DeAndre Hopkins. He's going to get 23 fantasy points. Mike Evans does right behind him. He's got 18. CD Lamb, he's got 18. So then, who else is going to have a big game? Javante Williams, yeah. I'm going to say 15 fantasy points. I think the way to attack those Buffalo Billies is to run it right up the gut. Keep Stephon Diggs and his temper tantrums on the sideline. I think Denver, very sneaky to cover the spread here. Go get Johnny in the room. Tell him I said that. And tell Johnny I also said that the Jet State is coming next week. So you better be prepared, buddy boy. As as sneaky plays as David's trying to make here, I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't. I'm going to project the winner. Mr. Jones himself. Andre Jones. Mates, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you next week.